I have pulled off the respirator. I've cut the fan so that I can talk to you guys. It is a Sunday. There is nobody here. It's Sunday fun day. I'm in here painting. This is a Hinkle Trout. It is massive. Um, I've got some base layers on it. It's got a Liquitex Gold across the top, which is an acrylic based metallic paint. I've got just a little bit, even though it looks lighter, this is a moss green. See, see what I'm saying? This thing can go at any time. These flipping things are so heavy. How heavy are they? Let's, let's weigh it. Hang on. There's a light. Okay. Uh, no tear. How heavy is it? 8.8 .8 ounces, almost nine ounces, not dressed, not painted, not cleared. It's a heavy mamma jamma. We're gonna try and make it look like that. Just not the par marks. So um, this is gonna be a stalker trout and those are beautiful, but they're not realistic for a fish this size at all. Not a zilch, zippo. And without the tail on it, it sits at a very comfortable 10 and almost three quarter inches. 10 and a half maybe, let's see. Yeah, we'll give it 10 and a half. It's gonna be over 11 with the tail on. Iridescent fuchsia. The very first thing I do, usually, unless there's par marks, is I come on the lateral line on this and I give it that pink line. I'm also, since I kind of started here, I should probably, yeah, it might be blown a little bit hot. Give it just a little bit in the cheeks here, just to color that up. Same thing on the other side. I'm moving this as little as possible. And I'll show you what I mean by fading away into the pattern. Yeah, there's a little bit of overspray here. I did come at it from this side, so you're gonna have a little bit of overspray on that. I'm gonna add some pearl white into this. And we're just gonna make that disappear and fade into the background. It also softens the boldness of this. See how we went from crazy bright to real muted, like a stalker trout? So easy to do that. You want your darkest colors, your absolute darkest colors and brightest colors to go into the background and go down on this pattern first. At least that's the way, I, I, I don't always do it, but with trout, stuff like that, yeah, I do. Um, and then we're gonna see if this is gonna show. I'm gonna drop that into the background. Sorry, I hit the camera a couple times. So there you go. Now we have really, really muted that down into a pattern that's more realistic, rather a color that's more realistic. I've been rolling fast and furious for the past, I don't know, two years, four years now, or gosh, four and a half years since I've been here at Pull Shad. Um, and it just seems like it's getting crazier and crazier by the minute, but that's how we love it. So we have a much more almost pastel version of this. The iridescence still shows because pearl white was used as the overcolor and iridescent, which has metallics in it, was used for that. One thing on that though, on that, I'm gonna come back with, and I've mixed this myself, and it's been so long since I've mis mixed it. Um, this is the trout final line. So it's almost like a sunset red or an orangish red. We're gonna, really really crank down the pressure and get it to about five 
I'm going to take the tip off of this. I'm going to pour some of this in and we're going to spray right in that lateral line because on most of these trout, even if they're stockers, you can still see that real thin, brighter line on the inside of the wider pink. So I am now running on about five PSI, maybe a little higher. Might be a little too low. And these, you can have staggered lines. I'm going to go back across this bait, and especially on the belly, with some pearl white. And I'm going to soften this red line. Again, it's going to be a, a, a witnessed miracle if I can get through this without catching this bait a million times in a helping hand. Now I'm going to just shoot whatever's left in the top here. Rainbow trout are very pearlized. And I'm really digging the color that's on top. It's almost like an olive green gold. Um, one of my faves for these stocker trouts because they're much lighter. Um, you can get some really good colored up bows, but for the most part, they're pretty faded. The next part on this is going to be laying in all those black dots. Um, I am going to do stencils for this since it's such a big canvas to work with. And I'm going to do a little bit larger on the head. I'm just using these Anarchy Model UK. And for the top, and we can go back over these. Just on the spine. And then we're going to blend everything else into it. You can have lighter sections than dark. That kind of makes it look more, more natural when it moves through the water. And then we're going to blend down our smaller dots, but I still want them fairly wide just because we have so much depth in these scales to go through. And you'll see that in a minute. Um, unfortunately, with these patterns, you almost have to do little bits here and there just to see how that's going to lay. And then some more randomized But if I were to do these randomized down here, doesn't look as visible, at least to me, up top because of the color. So if you have white, you can get away with it. But when you have any kind of darker color with the depth and, and the way these scales are carved on the hinkles, it's a little bit more difficult to see those dots. In my head, I'm screaming, please don't fall, please don't fall. I mean, 8.8 .8 ounces, y'all. That's, that's a big one.
and then we can kind of blend the rest of this down with this smaller. And even though this is a very defined stencil, you can still move your airbrush in a kind of random pattern and get some pretty cool results. I'm going to bring in just a little bit of shading in the eye socket. Now, I'm not sure how well the, the camera is picking this up, but the pearl white, you can see the shimmer and just how the light reflects off of these scales. I think that's pretty cool. And then just a little bit of green over top of some black magenta. I shot the black magenta in uh, portrait landscape. Portrait landscape, that doesn't make any sense. Portrait. You guys tell I'm sleepy. Um, just to kind of give it a more natural look. Love how this is coming together. I'm going to add just a little bit of gold on top of this, I think. Sorry about the movement. We are tripod today instead of GoPro. Let's shoot, see how that oh, it just fades right back. Good stuff. Nice and shiny, iridescent. Into the nose of this bait. Adding some electric blue, intense violet color shift. Maybe just a shot at the tail. The rest of it is going to be gold green. Turn it on that rainbow charm. Now we need a little bit of silver flash. How are we gonna do that? We are gonna dry brush a little bit of silver onto the tips of these scales. Again, I don't know how well the camera's picking up what's happening here, but as we blend this down, I'm gonna try and do a close up. Look at how much more natural this looks. You remember at the beginning of the video, we just had that stark pink and then that red line shot over it. Um, I skipped a couple spots on purpose just because it can be a little bit broken uh, in, in real life when you pick up a trout. Uh, but now we are really starting to see this come together. It's starting to look really natural. The more layering I put over that, especially with transparent and pearls, it just really looks almost lifelike. And that's what we're going for on a trout. At least that's the way I try to paint it. Um, it's very achievable as long as you have patience take the time to really, really do some detail.